being 33 and having a three-year-old and being homeless is not something that I ever envisioned. I've never envisioned that I would be homeless in my life. The face of poverty and those who can't afford certain things, it has an altogether new face. It's not who you think it is a lot of times. When you don't have money and you need to buy diapers, but you need some food too, or maybe you should try to catch up on your rent and you have to decide what to, you know, what to do. It's hard. We had a son in 2009, a little guy named Jack, who was the light of our life, and he was also the world's worst baby. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, can you put it all the way back there for me? Have no, how about... He was colicky, he cried, he screamed. Yeah. Oh, and you... <laughs> no, 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 I stop! <laughs> I stop! We were up with him one night, and he'd been crying and screaming for hours, and I'd done everything I was supposed to do, and nothing was working, and I had an overwhelming urge to hit him. And it was a really scary moment for me. So I put him down in his crib. I went and got my husband. And I said, he's yours. And I just lay in bed and I cried. And I started thinking about other mothers. What happens to that woman who has nobody to go get? And I started researching. I started calling places and saying, what do you need? And I heard over and over again, diapers. The first time I heard about the diaper bank, I was amazed that it didn't exist you know, from the dawn of time. I mean, we've had, you know, food banks, we've had, you know, shelters. It seems to me like those things would go hand in hand. There was no diaper bank in D.C., so piecemeal small social service organizations were trying to meet this need, but there was no one centered effort. They're not covered by food stamps, they're not covered by WIC funds, they're astronomically expensive, and they're more expensive in poor neighborhoods. So we incorporated the DC Diaper Bank on my son's first birthday. One, two, three, diapers! Thank you for coming today. The work that you guys are doing is going to help thousands and thousands of families all across this region. Uh, we could not do this work without you. We have a thousand volunteers a year who come in and spend two or three hours with us, and it makes a massive difference in our ability to serve families. So thank you so much, and carry on. We're doing twos. Perfect. So this part of the work has actually gotten a lot larger in the last few years. Um, started out as diapers and it's really grown into everything a family needs in order to thrive. And then to have the sanitary napkins and the formula, it's just an added bonus. We do period products, we do wipes, we do formula, we do food, um, adult diapers, hygiene products, we do a lot of breastfeeding supplies. It's just wonderful, I can't speak enough about it. How can you get any more honorable and basic and awesome than helping babies. That half a pack that DC Diaper Bank will give you, I mean, they go. It, you can make it go a long way. Each time I received it, it was just like there was a load lifted up off my shoulders because that was, you know, one less thing and one major thing. I have to worry about. It's just like pure sadness, really. Having to try to decide where to spend your last $25. It's just hard. A lot of why I'm passionate about this was the mothers. How do we give her a little bit of peace? And how does that peace then translate into the life of that child? I'm not one of those persons who's not going to try. Even if it is hard, I'm still going to try. I have a baby and I need to take care of him. Even if I was homeless, even if I am in a not so desired neighborhood, I'm not going to give up on my son or myself. Zero to three is the period of brain growth. That's when you get the brain you're going to get. And a child experiencing prolonged stress, their brain does not grow in the same way. The long-term impacts of that cannot be overstated. What's great about families coming here, even if it's the first time they're getting diapers, they get to come and learn about all the other things that we do here, and then hopefully participate in something else, which is great. One of our staff will pick up diapers, and then throughout the month, we, as we come to our home visits, we bring a pack for the families. 
It also serves as an incentive for home visits. You know, we come in and we're bringing those diapers that are so helpful for them. At the same time, we're providing some very useful information for the families. We had a family volunteer day, and she came with her daughter and her son. We were going through and we were saying, we're DC Diaper Bank, and we're so happy you're here, and we're an all-volunteer organization, and here's where the diapers go, here's how they help. And Jessica said, I know about your diapers. My son has worn your diapers, and they've helped our family in incredible ways. We do all have an obligation to help each other, and the same way they helped me when I needed it, you know, I'll more than gladly go help out. You can buy a Costco size box of diapers and donate it, and that's awesome. But you could also give us one diaper. So you can give us swim diapers. You can give us pull-ups. Doesn't matter. I mean, it's so simple. You know, all we do is put up a sign and have a box, and you know, once a week or maybe once every two weeks, there's something in there. I volunteer because I think that increasing access to healthcare and healthcare services starts at a local community level. If you get in that warehouse just once and volunteer for even an hour, it's hard not to be caught up in it and to understand the need and how easy it is to help. We are asked, you know, why are families who can't afford diapers having children? And I guess my response to that is, I don't know. But what I do know is that baby is here. These are all of our kids and we have to support them.